So group number three is ready. Yes. So you can start group number three, your presentation uh, that is depending on direct delta function. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, good afternoon, Tina, ma'am, and all present here. I, Josh Ravindra Bora, uh, with my fellow, fellow group members here, is here to present you our applied mathematical project based on direct delta function. Now, the, the uh, definition of direct delta function states that it's a function on a real line which is zero everywhere except at the origin. It's infinite. Hence, delta x equals to infinity when x equals to zero and delta x equal to zero when x is not equal to zero. Therefore, integration at delta, integration of delta x dx from limit negative infinity to infinity is equal to one. So now I request Jigger to continue with explanation of theory of delta, direct delta function. Thank you. Thank you, Josh, and good afternoon, my respected Miss Tina Wem and my fellow classmates. I am Jigar Hingu, role number 31. I am here to discuss about the theory of direct delta function. I think you all must have understood the definition of the direct delta function. Now let's see the some property part of theory part of the direct delta function. Direct delta means its area is always one. When you increase its height, automatically it will decrease and its total area is one. As shown in figure 2, by shifting the origin, we get the result as shown in figure 3. That's a, that's a, a, a equation is Laplace of delta t minus c is equal to uh, limit of infinity to 0 e raised to minus s t delta t minus c delta t is equal to e raised to minus c s. By theoretically, in mathematics, the direct delta function, delta function is the generalized function or distribute, distribution introduced by physician Paul Dirac. It is used to model the density of an idealized point, mass of the point as function is equal to zero where the expect for the zero and goes interior of the over entire real line is equal to one. As the distribution, the direct delta function is linear function that map every function to its value at zero. The truncal delta function, which is usually defined on a di direct domain and take value zero and one, it is discrete analog of a direct delta function. In engineering and signal processing, the delta function, also known as a unit impulse symbol, may be regardless regarded to its Laplace term as coming from the boundary value of value of complex analytics function of the complex variable. Now, Milan will explain about the properties. Thank you. Thank you, Jigar. Good morning to all. I am Milan Dollar, serial number 16, second year student from computer branch. I am here to discuss about the property of direct delta function. I think you all must have understood the theory of direct delta, direct delta function. So now let's discuss about the property of direct delta function. These are the property of direct delta function and these all are important property. Now let's see first property. f of x into delta of x equal to what? f of 0 into delta of x. Similarly, f of x minus a into delta of x minus a equal to f of a into delta of x minus a. x minus a. Move into second property, shifting property. Integration a to, integration a to b f of x into delta of x dx equal to f of x where a is less than 0 and 0 is less than b. Now third property integration a to b f of x into delta of x minus a x minus a delta of x equal to f of a into a is less than a and a is less than b. Fourth property integration a to b e f of x into delta of k of x dx equal to 1 of mod of k into f of 0. Next slide, please. Now, fifth property, delta of f of x equal to summation, summation from i equal to 0 to natural number into delta of x, x minus x of i upon mod of f dash of k, f dash of x. 
sixth property scaling property delta of a into x equal to 1 of mod of a into delta of x seventh property x delta of x square minus x x or a square equal to 1 of 1 of 1 upon 2 of 1 upon 2 mod of a into delta of x minus a plus delta of x plus a eight property scaling property delta of k of x minus x minus x dot equal to 1 of 1 of mod of k into delta of x minus x naught. Next property. Ninth property. Delta of k of x plus or minus b equal to 1 of mod of k into delta of x plus or minus b upon k. Nth property. Delta of k x square minus b equal to 1 of 1 upon 2k root of b upon a into delta of x plus root of a upon b b plus delta of x minus root of a upon b now let's see one example of direct delta function next side next slide example This is the uh, example of direct delta function question. Evaluate integration 0 to infinity t raised to m lo into log of t raised to n into delta of t minus 3 dt. Now let's see the solution. We know that integration 0 to pi f of t delta of t minus a dt equal to f of a. Here by comparing the both equation here we get a equal to 3 and f of t equal to t raised to m log of t raised to n. From formula t raised to 0 to infinity t raised to n log of t raised to n into delta t raised to or t minus 3 into minus 3 dt equal to f of 3. Now integration 0 to infinity t raised to m log of t raised to n into delta of t minus 3 dt equal to t raised to m into log of 3 raised to n by formula. Now I would like to now now I would like to Dipshika to explain the explain application of direct delta function. Thank you, Milan. Good morning, everyone. My name is Dipshika Milan, and my serial number is fifty nine. So, speaking about the application n probability theory and statistics the direct delta function is often used to represent a dis discrete distribution or a partially discrete partially continuous distribution using a probability density function which is normally used to represent absolutely continuous distributions for example the probability density function where f of x offered is a dis f of x of a discrete distribution consisting of points x is equal to x1 up to xn which uh, with corresponding probabilities p1 up to pn can be written as f of x is equal to summation from i is equal to 1 to n where pi into delta of x minus xi so the second uh, application will be explained by just Thank you, Dipshika. Uh, now you can see the second application of direct delta function is used in structural mechanics to you to describe translant loads or to find point loads of acting on a structure. The following formula used is m into double derivative of psi with respect to t plus k into psi is equal to i into delta. Now I would like Dipshika to give you an example about direct delta function yeah, so talking about the example the given equation is y y double uh, y double dash plus 3 y dash plus 2 y is equal to delta t where y 0 is equal to y dash of 0 is already given as 0 
derivative property we know that laplace transformation of double uh, double y is equal to s square into l laplace transformation of y minus s into y of 0 minus y dash of 0 and laplace transformation of y dash is equal to s into laplace transformation of y minus y of 0 hence putting these values in the equation s square into laplace transformation of y minus s into y of 0 minus y dash of 0 plus 3 the whole into s into laplace transformation of y minus y 0 plus 2 into laplace transformation of y is equal to laplace transformation of delta t we know that the laplace transformation of direct delta function is laplace uh, l in uh, laplace transformation of delta t minus c is equal to e raised to minus c s therefore uh, we get the equation as s square into Laplace transformation of y minus s into y of 0 minus y dash of 0 plus 3 the whole into s into Laplace transformation of y minus y of 0 plus 2 into Laplace transformation of y is equal to e raised to 0 as the value of z, uh, c is 0. Then we get it as as e of 0 is 1 we get the equation as follows. Then from given, uh, we know that the uh, value of y of 0 and y dash of 0 is 0. So putting those values in the equation, we get it as uh, s square into Laplace transformation of y plus 3 into s into Laplace transformation of y plus 2 into Laplace transformation of y is equal to 1. Then uh, equating all of means uh, equating the Laplace transformation, we get it as Laplace transformation of y the whole into s square plus 3s plus 2 is equal to 1. Therefore, uh, putting it in the shifting it to the right side, Laplace transformation of y is equal to 1 upon s square plus 3s plus 2. We, uh, we take it as e, we assume it as equation 1 then by partial fraction uh, 1 upon s square plus 3s plus 2 is equal to a upon s plus 1 plus b upon s plus 2 we assume it as equation 2 then uh, solving it we get uh, solving it we get the equation 3 and 4 and simultaneously simultaneously solving equation 3 and 4 we get the values as a is equal to 1 and b is equal to minus 1 substituting these values in equation 2 uh, we get it as 1 upon s square plus 3s plus 2 is equal to 1 upon s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 2 then from uh, then by the first equation we get it as laplace transformation of y is equal to 1 upon uh, s plus 1 minus 1 upon s plus 2 then uh, taking the inverse Laplace transformation we get it as y of t is equal to inverse Laplace of 1 upon s plus 1 minus inverse Laplace of 1 upon s plus 2 which is y is equal to y of t is equal to e raised to minus t uh, minus e raised to minus 2t and we get the final answer as follows. Thank you so much for everyone for uh, listening so patiently. A very nice presentation.